The median age in the United States was 38 back in 2019, according to the census. So can you guess what the median age of Congress is? In the House of Representatives, it's 58. In the Senate, it's 64. So some Gen Zers are trying to change that by throwing their hat into the ring and running for office. ABC congressional correspondent Rachel Scott got to catch up with two young people hoping to change the face of politics. Never planned. To A new era of politics is taking shape. Tell me what democracy looks like. Just tell them the truth. Tell them how it is. Well, I have a special guest with me today. From the White House, tapping pop star Olivia Rodrigo on COVID-19 vaccinations. Encouraging all communities to get vaccinated. To briefing TikTok influencers, getting the word out on Russia's war against Ukraine. Russian missiles have forced the residents of the Ukrainian capital to seek shelter in bunkers. And youth climate activists testifying to Congress. My generation doesn't care about the politics around climate change. We want productive discussions, realistic answers, and sound policies. Now looking to make their mark and represent their own generation in the nation's capital. It's critical that we get new energy, new voices, new people involved in our democratic process, uh, particularly in the halls of Congress, which are incredibly and unnecessarily polarized by fights among older generations over cultural issues and other things that reflect their inability to keep up with the changing world. In New Hampshire's first district, Republican candidate Caroline Levitt wants to make history as the youngest member of Congress. She turns 25 just weeks before the primary. Are people surprised? when they learn your age? Yes, they are. It's always the number one question I received. Why are you doing this? You're so young. And that's one of the many reasons I am. We need young, fresh leadership in Washington. Again, on both sides of the aisle. The former aide to President Donald Trump and Congresswoman Elise Stefanik is running in a crowded GOP primary. Several Republican candidates are hoping to flip the district red. Young voters in this country overwhelmingly vote Democrat. Mm -hmm. So what does your party need to do to change that? We are losing with my generation of voters big time. That's a serious problem for our country. And my generation in particular lacks young conservative voices. We need to encourage young conservatives when they come along. And we also have to do a much better job with messaging. 1,300 miles away from the New Hampshire snows in the Sunshine State's 10th congressional district, we find 25-year-old Maxwell Frost vying to represent Florida in our nation's capital. Hey, Ron DeSantis! Hey, Ron DeSantis! A former ACLU organizer and March for Our Lives activist, Frost would also become the first congressional member of Generation Z if elected. What was behind the decision to run? For me, it's actually when I was connected with my biological mother. She had me at the most one of the most vulnerable points in her life. I hung up the phone and I said I need to run for Congress, not just for myself, but for the issues that young people are being affected by these days. We live in a different world, um, different economy, different technology, and so we need that perspective. Currently, baby boomers make up nearly 60% of Congress. They account for 21% of all Americans. Two-thirds of congressional members are over the age of 55. Just 7% of House Democrats are under 40. We get a few more people in there who know what social media can do, who stay in touch directly with their constituents. Congress would better reflect the, vi the wishes and values of its constituents, individual district constituents, and overall electorate. The change young adults would like to see may be difficult to materialize. I believe strongly and unapologetically in the America First agenda that I helped implement in President Trump's White House. No matter who you are, no matter how old you are, rich, poor, right, I'm here to represent everybody. While Levitt and Frost detail the need for a congressional facelift, both candidates sticking to familiar talking points. Levitt says she believes transgender women should not be able to compete alongside other girls, rejects the notion of a climate crisis amid global warming, and falsely believes former President Donald Trump won the 2020 election. Frost hopes to be a champion against gun violence if elected, expand Medicare and eliminate insurance co-pays, deductibles and premiums, and supports Congressional Democrats' Green New Deal to curb the effects of climate disasters. As the 2022 midterm elections inch closer, Levitt and Frost not letting any criticism stand in their way of making history for themselves and their generation.
I've had a lot of people say, why don't you wait your turn? And I look at them and say respectfully, wait my turn for who? There has never been a more urgent time to shake up Washington. There has never been a more urgent time to send people there who have fresh eyes, fresh ideas. I was talking actually with a lady, I think it was a few weeks ago, who said, how old do you have to be to run for Congress? And I said, it says 25 years old in the Constitution. And then she said, well, it sounds like you're just on time. Um, so I would tell those folks we're just on time. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.